whole house was actually modeled to be like a ship because he was a navy uh, captain. Uh-huh. And, uh, like, he literally had a mast in his house that would move and shake and rattle to sound effects like it was on a boat. Uh-huh. Anyways, he had a bunch of weird stuff. This he bought at some, probably some flea market or, you know, swap meet and left it for me when he died because it, you know, it's cool, I guess. It's I mean, it's, cool. it's, it's, it's I, a cool I thought about buying it many times. Yeah. There can be only one. There was a Reddit post, actually. Somebody found that exact one, like, all rusted out in a river. <laughs> That's oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it looks like uh, they're drawing their first hands and getting f- off to the races here. Matt's going to fetch out, I'm going to guess, an island to play around Wasteland, and it looks like he's portenting. And I'm correct. Look at that. Who's Chuck? Do I know Chuck? What's up, Chuck? Chuck? Up, Chuck? <laughs> Chuck. Wait, is it the Chuck that we know? He says, yeah, it seems like he's local and he says he's Chuck, so... Oh, know. really? Oh, hi, Chuck. You got married and disappeared. Hmm. I heard you're moving. That's Hirochus on sheathing his samurai sword in the yes, background. It felt right. It felt good. Oh, baby, look at all that. You got a force of will, brainstorm, counterspell, swords. Bring on your creatures. The only thing you really doesn't want to see is a mongoose, basically. You stop playing cards, Chuck. Yes, that's him. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, Toronto. I heard that. I heard that from. Uh, that's my, where my family's my... from, yo. He's moving after that health care. <laughs> yeah. Well, get ready for a cold winter. Winter's coming. Oh boy, as a blue white control player, seeing that double double blue on turn two feels so good. They used to be counterbalance mana, but now it's counterspell mana. Yeah. Mongoose counterspell. Snap counterspell. We don't want to deal with that. Days wrecked. Dude, I missed you. No, I missed you in the last fire because it was last Sunday. I was there. He just missed you in his heart. That's all. And he said fire and ice, not fire and dice. Well, I think that's what he meant is fire and dice, yeah. right? Yeah, the old pass go from Matt. Classic uh, standard staple move of the uh, blue white control deck. Control deck, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like Joe's fetching, but what for and why? Why in the end step here? Did he know what was on top from the last turn? Probably. Or he's got and the bolt. Interesting. So I don't I don't know what Joe's doing the bolt because he just thinks there's not gonna be better targets and that he's gonna win fast enough. But I'm not sure I like that bolt to the face, quite honestly, because Matt has monastery mentors in triplicate in his deck, and I'd rather save a bolt for that. Yeah, I would too, but I think he's trying to get to the threshold as fast as he can. Okay, that that okay, I forgot about that. That makes sense. He's got a goose and he's going for threshold. I can see that being a reasonable play then. Yeah, you're right, you're missing. And Ponder puts him at uh, five cards in the graveyard with the ability to play a fetch land and uh, possibly cantrip again, getting him to threshold. <laughs> he had three bolts. Oh, okay, so if he had three bolts, I'm totally fine with that then. Oh, yeah, he does. I can see it now. Yeah, thanks, Super Brox. I didn't see that. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, I would fire them off too. No big deal. Man, I want a Highlander sword. Trade you for a tabernacle. I sold my tabernacle Damn it. for two hundred bucks. Jeez. Good deal. That was a <laughs> big mistake. I mean, it's a card that I never played. And I will never play. Well, cause yeah. I was going to be honest. Thank you for saying that. Because my response to your text earlier was going to be like, well, at least you got $200 for it. Because right now, if you still had it, it'd be worth 1000 but it'd be sitting in your binder and you'd have $0. So 
So yeah, technically, you came out ahead. The, the difference would be I would have it. You'd have it, and you yeah, could sell it, thing. but you don't, and so you got money, and you wouldn't use it. So technically, I'm the optimist here, man. I'm just I know the bright side. I guess. All right, so that brainstorms here. No action from Joe, so he gets a planes, a force of will, and an unknown. It's white, then mentor. Or swords. Might be a swords. Which would be pretty useless in this position, so I can see leaving that third down. Yeah. That's probably why he wanted to get up the threshold, because that's a, a reasonable threat. I mean, unless. I mean, yeah, always. he's counting, so he's at five. <clears throat> Joe has a fetch lane, though. And I think a canter, so he can get there. Yeah, Jorgensen makes a point that I make quite often, which is that, like, the card's worthless if it stays in your binder, you know? Like, I, I tell people, like, oh, my collection's worth X amount, but, like, not really, because I'm never going to sell anything. It's really worthless, you know? Uh, I mean, you could. Yeah, no, if I had to pay a medical bill or something crazy, yeah. I could sell them and everything, sure. But I'm not, probably not gonna. Yeah, I mean, know? I could, like, in a pinch, I could sell them to help with my, you know, daughter's college yeah. tuition or something. I, right. I would totally do that, you know? Or you could just sell a part of it and pay for the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the one I had, well, I know was real because uh, I got it from my friend who opened it from a legend pack, and I, I, was, I was there. Joe, uh, the pull is a Tarmogoyf, adding his threat count to the board, but that's going to get unexpectedly absented to the top of his deck. Which leads me to believe Matt might have a predict in his hand. So if Joe has a daze here, I would deploy it. Because what Matt is telegraphing is that he's got predict. Does he? He may not, but he's telegraphing that he does. He didn't. Why didn't did he put it in? Oh, no, but I thought it was Doesn't have a predict. Nope. The other bolt. Yeah, it's threshold. That's enough. Somehow you got another one in the graveyard, though. Chuck, you don't need to worry about buying cars. You didn't even play it. Wait till you have kids. You really don't get to play. Hmm. Alright, so he comes in for three with threshold active. I downsized. And I'm guessing Joe's gonna just redeploy that, uh, that goif that he probably drew. Did you downsize your chuck time? Yep, and he does as predicted. Pull the goif. And he's counting storm. I don't know what's doing. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's counting up the what the goif is. threshold now? Yes. yes it oh, is. he was at threshold last turn. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he was at 10 and he attacked and got to 7. So. Sorry. I yeah, no, that was cool. You were talking. I was too busy tugging at Chuck. That's cool. Alright, so he draws a Goyf, gets in for 3, deploys the Goyf almost undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. Yep. And passes. Matt looks like he drew Ponder, which he casts. Finding three unknowns. 
I'm doing the head lean. Oh. Ooh, oh, the is. supremest of verdicts. Oh, yeah. You can get that supreme verdict with uh, the sour cream on it. Like Chalupa, supreme mm. verdict Chalupa. I don't know. Taco Bell joke, not a good one. I'll try again later. So we sell off my punch. Yeah. The, okay, so I love Supreme Verdict because it's like the best Wrath of God, but I also don't like it because it makes Wrath of God unplayable and irrelevant, and that's like one of my favorite cards. Oh, Stifles, the Jace. So, okay, wait a minute. The counters going on the Jace is a trigger? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not 100%. I'm oh, not. he forced it. No, he forced it. Oh, that's God. why. I'm not a rules guy. He forced it pitching the stifle. Okay. He didn't stifle it. I was like, oh my God, that's insane. That would not be how it worked. <laughs> Captain, why are you playing Wrath of God in your Parfait deck? Because it's all white? Because, like, regeneration doesn't matter at all. Is that Jorgensen? Yeah, the orange one is, yeah. Do you have any kids, Jorgensen? Because I would, I would sell my collection for my kids. For sure. Well, if it's Mono White Captain, then I'm all for it. I understand. But you used to play White just to play Wrath of God. You know, that was like one of the big draws. And now it's like, oh, I have to because, okay. So, Matt packs it in. It's like, folds to the pressure yeah. of the rug delver. What about you, Chris? What's that? You, would you ever consider... Selling off your collection? Um, I honestly, I don't trade or sell almost anything, especially if it comes to the legacy staples. You just hoard it? Yeah, well, I hoard it. It's all going up. It's the hobby. It's, you know, it kind yeah. of makes the stream happen. Yeah. For me, it's more than just a collection now. It's kind of an investment for this and so on and so forth. I would if I had to for family, no question, you know, yeah. priorities and stuff, but I'd sell other things before I sold my magic cards, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean. My body, you know, my soul. Yeah, no, I, I like I've had you know cards. I have expensive cards, and you know I there were times in my life where I thought about selling. Like when I bought like engagement ring. Yeah. Thank God I didn't sell my cards for that one. And uh, and you know when I had kids, I thought about it. And when I bought my house, I thought about it. But yeah. Yeah, honestly, I don't. We need a pimp crate. <laughs> Thanks, Jorgensen. <laughs> I thought I'd sell my body instead of my cards. Oh, uh, watch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got orifices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's an orifice? Uh, yeah, okay, so I kind of like what Joe's doing over there. More counter spells. More destroy blue stuff. Sulfuric Vortex seems really good against Matt. Yeah. I like that card sure. a lot. I didn't even think about playing that in Rugged Over. What to take out, though? Yeah. Man. Because. Oh, yeah. Stifle. Wait, he's on the play. Well, he won, right? Oh, he won. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> he's taking those out, of course. Yeah, <laughs> perfect, Jorgensen. That's, uh, that's why you're mod. You got to do stuff like that. I didn't even know you could do that. The number one quote on the stream now is, is I've got orifices. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> so just taking out the stifles, which seems fine, because really all he's got to aim at are the fetch lands with Matt. I mean, he could probably stifle the miracle trigger, yes. but again, it's limited, you know, in that in that regard. Um, I think it's a fine cut, and I don't think you really want to play dazes either. Those are pretty bad against this kind of control deck. So David Wynn. Thanks for watching, friend. That's your cards on cam. Uh, are those boom bust? Uh, what card are we looking at? Uh, in the bottom, I, I can't bust. identify. Is that boom bust? It's not rough tumble. Like, it could be rough tumble. I think it's rough tumble, right? I think it's rough tumble. Yeah, I don't know I why don't, you play boom bust. Yeah, there's no boom bust in that deck. Yeah, because you want to be able to clear flying 
in or on the ground stuff in yeah, front well of you. Well, that's to get rid of Mentor Torque tokens. Oh, nice, yeah. And that's super relevant in this matchup, obviously. Yeah, all he's got is non, non flying creatures, right? What is this one called? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they play rough and rough and tumble because uh, it doesn't kill their creatures most of the time. I mean, like I me, mean, blue blue red double. I I run one in my sideboard. It uh, it keeps your delver alive. Um, and uh, prowess guys alive. But this one you can keep while Goif and assuming that uh, uh, mongoose has special that doesn't kill it. So. I think that's the reasoning behind running that card in the sideboard. They'll never cast it. They'll never cast the, the six damage to flying creature thing. I, I'm sure it's happened, but... So if they have all their duels out, even if they have used uh, all the wastelands, they could cast it. What's that? We're talking about can they even get the six six mana to cast uh, the tumble? Oh, uh, not like not usually. I mean, it's possible, but they probably won't. Yeah, exactly. So the Delver. This is a flyer. Yep. Alright, looks like Matt leads with turn one planes, which is interesting. I mean, I guess that represents the turn one th swords, you know, if he deploys a Delver. Seems fine. Mm -hmm. um, Matt grabbed the planes with that because that's an Arid Mesa, you know. You don't really want to grab anything else. Especially in a deck that plays Wasteland. Can't get blue, get white. Yeah, for a while I was playing a Electricery on the side for the sweeper spot, but I think I like the, the rough better. Uh, it's just more damage, you know, and yes, it deals with tokens, but mentor tokens grow, you know, so sometimes you need to be able to get over, you know, one prowess trigger. Yeah, and you gotta kill the freaking prelate. That damn yeah. card. I lost the two prelates in that Sunday. Jeez. Uh, what were you playing? I was playing blue-red. Mm. I thought I guess the yeah. attacks is... Prelate on one's pretty rough. God damn it. Prelate on three is pretty rough against show and tell. Oh yeah. Almost impossible, honestly. I agree, Captain. Electricery was had its had its day in the sun with treasure crews and even dig through time being a thing. Um, in a lot of cases, electricery is fine for Delver because it's only one mana, but when I want the electricery effect I probably just want it on the Is it Static Aster, honestly. Uh, Re reusable. It's, it's actually two mana because you have to overload it. That's true, I guess. Uh, and well, that even makes my games more, I guess. Yeah. So I mean, it's, so it makes it. I mean, first, first of all, it doesn't even kill the prelate. Right? Mm -hmm. You probably can't cast it anyways. It doesn't get around chalice for one. Doesn't kill mentor. Doesn't kill mentor. Uh, yeah, it seems it's fine all the way around. 
Yeah, but I I loved it when I cast it against uh, elves. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I. Yeah, uh, I think I was playing Blue Red Devil or a Treasure Cruise against elves and fork bowling and drawing like a boss. That was just the best time. Yeah, see, I I didn't do the the Treasure Cruise Elver thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did oh, the yeah. burn with Treasure Cruise. Yeah, and, and like that's I remember you did that. Yeah. Oh, dude, um, that was awesome. But the thing. <laughs> That's the thing. Like everybody gives, and I, I don't. I don't mean to like say anything bad about Bob Wong. He's a fine player and seems like a nice guy. Um, but people give him a lot of credit that like I'm not 100 percent sure is earned. I, I'm granted he won the GP when Treasure Cruise was a thing, but again, what he won with was Ancestral Recall and Burn spells. Yeah. Like that's a fine accomplishment, but like that doesn't make you a great Magic player, in my opinion. You know, he's proven to be a quality player over time. I just people ask me like, "Oh, did you know Bob Wong's doing this?" And I'm like, eh, "I don't really, uh, I guess, I don't know, I'm like whatever." I think I'm just I'm just impressed with other players more. I guess is all. I, I, I mean, I guess, but I I don't think the burn decks are that easy to play. And I mean, it's straightforward, yes, but there is certain things that that you have to remember. You have to, you know, think about all the damage and when to do it. I agree. I think there's more intricacy than with Burn than people give it credit for. But, you know, it's basically like his claim to fame is like winning with Ancestral Recall and, and Lightning Bulls. And it's like, okay, well, like, eh, it's pretty basic magic. Like, you know, I guess I respect a win with, like, Death and Taxes more or, you know, something a little more complicated than, like, Bolt You? Yeah. Draw Bolt You? Force Will Draw Bolt You? You know, like, it's, I don't know. That's just my take. Uh, I'm not trying to shit talk on him. He's, he's a fun player. I just, uh, I, I mean, you're talking to a blue red. Yeah, yeah, player, exactly. So and it's, like, I'm not, I'm not shooting on the archetype or anything. It's just that like the amount of skill that it takes to violate that versus playing like blue light control is on a different level. Oh yeah, that's yeah. all. Yes. It was hilarious. Though. I mean, that's that's probably when they figured out oh, we gotta we gotta ban this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who who knew drawing three cards for like almost nothing that were all burn spells and cantrips was good? Who'd have thought? All right, so Joe's gonna brainstorm, working up towards that uh, threshold count. Gonna find a what is that? A bulk surgical. Captain makes a good point. I have no complaints about Blue Red Delver now, but like with oh, Treasure Cruise, yeah. like it was just not complicated. It was just like burn spells, drop three more burn spells, drop yeah, three more. Yeah. Like you know, sometimes I, I don't know. I I like that about the deck. I I like simple decks. That's I'm totally fine. There's, yeah, I'm definitely not not trying to shoot on anybody who likes that or enjoys that strategy. Yeah. It's totally fine. I just in terms of like credibility and becoming a big name and getting you know jobs writing magic and stuff it's like okay maybe he was a good player and he just won with that deck and that's fine but like to be like he's so amazing he won with his deck it's like okay well like yeah, it's not that hard <sighs> oh, all right To be honest, I don't I don't miss Treasure Cruise at all. I miss Dig Through Time. I'm a, I'm a show and tell player. Dig Through Time. Once Treasure Cruise got banned, Dig Through Time became the card to play, and then on Mono Blue Omnitel became the best deck in the, in the format. And I was a happy freaking camper, man. <laughs> I loved it. Top eight and left, right, and center. Just wishing for things at instant speed, holding priority, retaining priority, and digging through time for the answers. Oh my god, give me more. I want it. Now, I will say, in all fairness, that takes a relative amount of skill, you know, in terms of, like, burn spells, comboing pieces together A and B. I'm not saying I'm a genius or anything, I just, uh, I give more credit to players like Craig Wesco than, like, you know, burn players, that's all. I agree, Super Proxy, but that's because PCL is a master of burn and knows how to definitely play that one probably better than most magic players he's a madman for dedicating himself to burn for that long but somebody had to do it (laughs) 
Uh, looks like he's going to try to force that uh, Blood Moon. Matt's going to Pyroblast back. Now the question is, does Joe invest another counter spell? He has it. He can. I believe he does. Matt could Fluster Storm back, but the Blood Moon resolving is really bad for Joe. Granted, he's got yeah, Mongooses, Mongoose. and they will be live pretty soon, but if Matt then just flips the board, you know, it's game over for Joe. So Joe's going to deploy a Vendillion click. I imagine it's going to target Matt. Unless he's just going to pitch a useless card. Which I think he's considering. Huh. I still think you take Matt. You look at Matt's hand either way here. I, don't, I can't tell what that last card is I for think Joe. It's, I think a land. It's, it's either a land or a lightning bolt. Oh, no, bolt. it's not land. It's a lightning, it's a lightning bolt. bolt. Yeah. Um, you didn't take that out? He could shift the lightning bolt because it's kind of useless. Or whatever the right card. He left it because it's like. To kill Matt. Too. Yeah. I don't know why he wouldn't just force pitching the Vendillion click other than the Fear of Terminus, really. Wow, he's sending the force to the bottom. That's interesting. That's not what I expected. And he draws the blue card, which is what he would could have used. Oh my god, he drew a pierce. Wow. Oh my god, wow. it's like he knew. That's insane. What Did he know that? Hell? There's no way. Did he know that? No. I'm that's not. insane. That was great. Hold on. That's a, that's a wow moment. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Did he know with the brainstorm though? And he might have, but... If, even if he did, that was still a great play. That was a nice sequence. I didn't even see that. Well done, Joe Moreno. That's why that guy wins, opens. And that's threshold. Now he's the threshold, plus three. Plus nine. Great play, Joe. That was awesome, man. Uh, very good. He may have known that the Pierce was there. And well, you, even if he knew, oh, it looks it yeah, looks yeah, sexy, yeah. and it was smart. I want to ask him. I'm curious. He was going to investigate. Did he know? Did you know the Pierce was there? Did you know the Pierce? Was there? Yeah. So he knew. He knew. Okay, yeah. Still, great play either way. I didn't even see that setup. That was awesome. A very cool play. Yep, I like it. So it looks like he's gonna snap, pyroblast the Vendillion click. He probably doesn't block. No need to waste the snap. Joe makes him go back because he's got the spell pierce. And the, it's fine because he's gonna pay for it, but he's gonna pretty much cut Matt from doing anything else off. You know, cut him off from doing anything else. Oh, is he gonna survive with the two? Wonders. He's not. He's gonna block one and die. Oh, he's gonna oh, swords and snap. Oh, that's actually a that's a nice high level play. That'll get him to one life and buy him some time. Another good play on Matt. Matt's like, oh yeah. It's a, it's a prevent defense. Oh, Whoa, he's the mentor. Oh, yeah, baby. Late, way too late. Does he have a brainstorm? No, that's blocking. Nice. Okay. So he's okay for. He'll get, he can block. He can, he can block. double block. And he's got the Blood Moon. Uh, yeah. Jeez. Well, that just chump blocks. Too long age. Yep. Alright. Terminus? <laughs> He's he did the old slap and rub. Let's see, is it there? Ah, he yeah. scoops it. All right, that would have been good. Yeah. All right, we get a, we get a third one. It's a good match. So, oh no, that, that was it, right? Joe just wins. Yeah. 
Alright, I got a long drive. I think I'm gonna take off. No worries, man. Thanks for coming here. It was good having you. <clears throat> Alright guys, uh, Hero's gonna take off and I'm gonna pop out and talk to Joe and Matt and see how, if they want to keep going or how they're feeling. Uh, and Mike. Um, we should still have enough to keep going if they want to, so uh, stay tuned. We will be back momentarily.